we go. Okay, fantastic. Great. Yeah, then let me start. Um, well, welcome everyone to today's roundtable then um, on the topic of how to promote learning across your organization. I think there's actually quite a few um, new faces on here. So I'll um, yeah give a bit of a, of a quick introduction before we can um, move on to, to the actual program of today. So um, yeah, we, we host these roundtables um, as regular networking events for the L&D space. So yeah, naturally, um, mostly um, high level learning and development professionals will be um, the ones joining. Of course, also um, trainers, coaches, um, service providers in the space. And sometimes, depending on the topic, C-level executives. And the reason why we um, do these events and host these events is we really want to um, provide like a platform for the learning and development um, community to come together um, on an international level, really, across countries. Um, and yeah, connect, um, get new ideas, get new input, share their experience, and yeah, really provide like a like an interactive um yeah, space for, for the community to network. And the way we structure the, uh, these events usually, so we have a specific focus topic and invite a speaker um, to give a keynote speech on that. And then after that, we really open the, the whole event up, um, give everyone the chance to introduce themselves and uh, yeah, share their experience and ideas on the topic and ask questions, of course, and yeah, make it a really yeah interactive um session for everyone and yeah then at this point i quickly hand over to you chris um chris is the the ceo and founder of um blue elephant solutions of today's host and he's gonna give a quick introduction as well yeah i'm gonna keep it super short max so you can just click through all the uh, points already um yeah blue elephant solutions we are focusing and experts in ai enabled learning and um, spaced uh, learning technologies we do have a few standard products which you see here knowledge gym is our space learning technology tool and then we have built um, an ai content generator which you can use in our tool to generate learning contents out of existing pdf documents for example we just released our AI coach, uh, which is um, currently in the form of an AI job interview coach. So you can, it's more B2C product uh, in, in this version. People can practice with an artificial intelligence job interviews and get feedback on how they can improve. But the same technology, we're currently building the back end for this one so that companies can create their own custom scenarios where you can, for example, practice um, uh, selling conversations, you can practice service conversations, um, wherever you have or employee uh, um, discussions and things like this. And we're also currently working on an AI assistant, Andrea, that's what I, what I uh, mentioned earlier to you, where we enable companies to upload their individual content, um, for example, product descriptions, uh, Q&As, uh, FAQs, all of this kind of information. And then you have a user front end on a mobile phone where you can query this information using uh, something like ChatGPT. So you can really chat with the content, which I think is super interesting. And, and we really hope that we can support many companies um, uh, with this. And then we do some custom developments as well for, for our clients. Um, and always in the hope that we can support the l and community, um, that's uh, really where our heart and our passion is. Yeah. And that's also why we have this course, um, because we really want to share information and, and, and best practices. And uh, Max, um, I think I hand over back to you and you will probably introduce Andrea now, I guess. Yeah. Spoiler alert, but yes, I will. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure then to, to introduce today's speaker um, to you all um, with my slide moves one second yes there we go um yeah so today's speaker is andra asene um very very happy that she's taking the time today out of a schedule to join us um she's a very experienced learning and development professional um as you can see around 14 years of, of background um in the space and really worked across some very very uh, renowned uh, companies like microsoft and, and electronic arts just to name a few 
and yeah, very experienced in um, developing um, strategies in, in learning and growing team skills and uh, setting up processes and procedures in, in these organizations. And overall, really active in, in the LD community as well, which makes her a perfect speaker for today. So she um, she publishes a, publishes a newsletter, for example, um, LD Connect, the newsletter. You can uh, find that one on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, also has uh, contributed uh, quite a few articles to um, the e learning industry platform, actually, as well. Um, so yeah, overall, really passionate about learning and development and sharing her experience. Um, and yeah, again, really uh, thank you very much, Anna, for taking the time today. Um, and sharing your experience with us and everyone on this call. And uh, yeah, I will um, stop sharing my screen then so you can start sharing yours. And um, yeah, very much looking forward to your um, to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation and welcome everyone. And um, I hope this presentation will uh, will provide you a better overview on um, on how to um, how to promote and how we. Uh, actually, just a second to minimize this. Oops. Yeah, I will. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen now in the presenter mode, just to make sure that everything works. Uh, yeah, it's okay. okay. I, I can. Yeah, perfect. Because I cannot see you anymore. So yeah, <laughs> the purpose of uh, of today's presentation and why I wanted to to provide this information because from from my experience. I've uh, I've worked on various projects where I had to work in the LND department, but also creating from 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 scratch some activities, some some learning um, um, learning projects. But uh, today uh, I want to to show uh, some why this LND department is really important and how can we make to promote it better in the company across the organization, but also. Do you, inside your department but also throughout the other departments in the company to make sure that uh, uh, you are visible through your projects. Um, I will start with the presentation of the department because um, why I think the LND department is really important. Actually, I've also written an article about 10 steps on how to create this this, um, this department. I will share the article, actually also the presentation if it's uh, uh, if it's necessary, I also share it after after the after this presentation. But why this department actually is important? Because it also uh, it develops durability and encourages the learning throughout the the department and also throughout the employees. Because the purpose of having the LND department is to help employees develop on their skills, even if they are technical skills or soft skills, soft skills. Um, to grow and improve them, because even if we create this this opportunities, initiatives, it's important to see the, the outcome from from that uh, project that we do. And inside the department, another thing that it's important to have this kind of department is to increase the level of proactivity and independence of the and also the responsibility of the teams, because the learning and development department it's. In my opinion, it's somehow split in two sides. One, internally, because you are growing your team, you are working with your internal stakeholders in order to, to make these two things happening. And on the other side, you are working from somebody, from the other departments in order to improve this, uh, these skills. How you promote them? Because, okay, we are creating activities, we are developing initiatives, but how we, why we have to promote them and how we do that? First of all, why it's needed to promote it? Because you increase that visibility of your project, of your project or initiative, it, it doesn't matter, it's, it's, it's about the same, but also you can create your team brand and other departments can know you as, a, uh, as what you'd like to transmit to, to focus on and see other departments, see from your learning department and from your teams and from your initiatives. And on the other side, the main purpose of this department is to develop these personal and professional skills of, of the other team members. But let's see how we do that, because there are all a lot of initiatives that, meaning what you see here, we will take them one by one, but all of them I've implemented in the different companies I work for. But I think, in my opinion, all of them can be a a good start and uh, also a continuous improvement to, to promote your learning department across the organization. I will take first of all, for the first one, the monthly newsletter. What we can add here, we can add, first of all, our 
uh, we have actually here the opportunity to add our, our project updates, our initiatives, what we've done, what are the, our purposes for the next period. We can also collaborate with other departments in the company in order to promote also their initiatives. But we can be the start here because we'll also create a brand for us that the learning department developed that newsletter for the entire company to provide visibility of all the projects. Uh, and what I've done, and here I, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Actually, during the, my last experience, I've created this newsletter promoting the learning and development initiatives, but also collaborating with other departments where they can come through and promote their updates on, on, their, um, <clears throat> on their projects. I'm sorry. Um, what is the outcome here? That others, other people, other departments can take this example and be implement this for their, uh, for their uh, departments, or the other part is that they can come in this newsletter. We can attract the people to come there and uh, provide also their uh, initiatives to, to the company. The team side. Um, the team side, this is related to the branding, branding of, the, of your department throughout the organization. The team side, it can be created, for example, most of the companies are using either SharePoint or Google Docs to to compile and uh, include all the information they need in order to, to do their daily tasks. As it. But usually we have just folders there, we add information, but how we can make this go to the next level and promote and create an identity for your department, for the l &D department in this case. For also SharePoint, the dog, and on the same time, or in the same time, also um, Google, uh, the Google Drive provides the opportunity to create a site from from that. So no, not just having folders there, but promote it as a as a website. Both of them provide this opportunity in order to create something more visual, more appealing, and more structured. Because this actually the first benefit that provides this team site is that you have the uh, your information, your projects, more organized, more visual. You can add images. You can identify things with related to a specific picture. But on the other side, the, the other uh, departments from the company can check that when actually when you provide that link of the teams of that team site, the SharePoint or Google Drive, they can identify the learning and development department with an organization with a structure, with some pictures, identifying the people that are there in the learning department. So this is another thing that, that can be used in order to, to promote this um, uh, your learning initiatives because actually you are adding them there. Company internal events. I've done this uh, during my last, also during my last experience. I've organized learning days for, uh, actually the name it's, just as a learning day that can be dedicated that day for that specific uh, area from your department or for the department itself. And I will give some examples for you here. For example, usually the learning and development department has instruction designers, trainers, technical writers, or um, um, facilitators and so on, uh, or content publishers. It, I just give some, some examples. What I've done in my case, during my last experience, I had the instructional designers and technical writing writers organizing these events, one day event. It can be dedicated event for one day or for, for a specific time of that day where you are inviting a guest speaker outside the company that can provide useful insights, best practices for your team. And during that day, your team, your L&D department, your your entire team is participating to that event, to that session that can share somehow between the uh, between the uh, information that you'd like to obtain, also what you want to maybe provide some example, ask some questions from, from the guests. On the other side, this is one part that can, in this internal events can be organized. But on the other side, another thing that can be um, where we can implement this somehow, it's involving other people in from the from the company from the organization in this event how we can do that for example your team would like to know what are the other activities in the companies what the other departments are doing but also they can get information related to their uh, their activities and you can involve the other people you can promote the event inside the company it can be one day dedicated for that month. And you, you can invite, for example, the engineers to present you how the, the, product are the products are developed. Because usually the L&D department 
create and uh, create initiatives, projects, have tasks related to the company products or company services. And coming in that in that event, the engineers, the HR department, or other departments related to the company can provide a better overview for your department in involving them in um, in inviting them like speakers for the department. In, in this way, the way we promote is that we organize that event, we promote it in, in the company, and we can create a culture of, of learning also from other uh, departments, but also other departments implementing the same and maybe the learning department being invited in, in this kind of events. Uh, in my case, I'll just conclude here. In my case, I've created uh, events related to each area where I invited uh, an external guest speaking about uh, their specific interest. For example, the team uh, um, set, set it up uh, a number of questions and topics that they want to achieve at the end of the presentation, and the speaker created a presentation based on that. Daniel report, uh, the, the, third, the fourth one. This is a report that I'm also encouraging um, everyone. It, it doesn't matter if it's related to the learning department or another other department, but now we are talking about L&D and it's a, it will be a report related to L&D uh, to provide to your superiors, to the top management, an annual report with um, what were your objectives for this year? What were your results based on your objectives? Uh, actually, we here the, the way I've started it's to 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 mention again what's the purpose of the L and D department. After that, the objectives, the results for this year, and also the upcoming objectives for the next year. What I would like to achieve with my team next year, because the annual report should be sent at the end of the year or at the end of the fiscal year, when you'll be presenting actually what you've done together with what you want to 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 achieve with with your with your team. Dedicated company groups, channels, or forums. Um, inside each company, we use a lot of, um, uh, let's say, tools to communicate to each other. It can be Teams, uh, Zoom, uh, Slack. It, there are a lot of channels like this. And to have the opportunity to promote more your initiatives, to see how to provide actually constant updates or reports or meaning visual small reports or uh, updates on what you've done, what you've achieved with your team, it can be created dedicated groups in these specific tools that I've previous, previously mentioned, where you can provide constant updates and you can invite other people to that group in order to see your initiatives. And maybe the group can be also used to ask questions related to your department. It can be a general group related to everything that it's actually uh, uh, somehow focused on the learning part, on the learning and development department. And everyone from the company can come and ask questions related to the learning. You can provide your initiatives, updates on your small initiatives constantly. It can be, for example, uh, you want to encourage people uh, to follow a specific, to focus on a specific course that you've just created, and that group can be dedicated for that. Also, the monthly newsletter can be also dedicated to. It can be used to to promote the the, the latest courses created, but also the dedicated groups because it focuses on specific uh, information and small information, but. Uh, dedicated to that specific topic, and people can uh, can have visibility on that. Also, you can receive questions directly there, and uh, in this way, uh, your L and D department uh, can promote better all 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 the initiatives there, and receive questions, talks, networking. You can have. Uh, Another benefit that these groups can, can have is the fact that you can create directly calls there in the group and you can uh, have, I don't know, virtual sessions directly there and people that are involved in the, in the group can join it. And this it's, it's another option uh, that uh, was, uh, and actually I, I've noticed it, it's used. NBRs or QBRs, this has monthly business reviews or quarterly business reviews. Um, it can be similar somehow with the annual report, but it's not actually like that because the annual report, uh, in the annual report, we provide the entire year, uh, the entire work that we've uh, focused and we achieved throughout the year. In the MBRs or QBRs, uh, we have presentations 
let's say like this one, where we promote through graphics, uh, visual perspectives, what we achieved for the last period. It doesn't mean it's a month or a quarter, but you come there with your team. You can choose a representative of your team or the manager can be the representative of uh, the person that will represent the team at that point, but can provide the, uh, the overview of all the achievements throughout the period. And your report will provide for the entire year. But here, we actually provide graphics, visual perspective, visual images, and we talk on them to see, uh, to, to make others see our, um, uh, our work throughout that period and maybe um, have, have questions related to, related to this. The annual, and another difference that I want to make in between the annual report and MBR QBRs is the annual report usually is sent by uh, for it sent to your direct manager. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a CEO, VP, uh, learning manager, senior manager, head of department. Then MBRs or QBRs are presented. It can be presented also to the top management, but usually are more people in, inside the presentation. And it's also a virtual presentation here, besides the, the annual report, which is a document that is created at the end of the year. Our branding within the company. Actually, all the, uh, the ideas that I've presented here will identify you as a learning and development department in a way. But besides that, you can also create your own branding, your own name, uh, or you can promote and you can make through your work with your team a branding within the company. When I'm saying uh, this branding, it's not a... Um, uh, let's say a touchable branding that, for example, yes, it can be also the team site is a touchable branding because you, you go in the site and you see what is happening there, how team is created, how it's how it works, what are the people involved in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the department. But the branding, it can be also created in an indirect way through the work that you are doing, through the messages that you are promoting through the team, how the team is organized, how the team is split, what kind of things we are, uh, we are doing and we are promoting uh, each month, what kind of projects do you have. This is a branding, an indirect type of branding that the L&D department can create inside, the, inside an organization. And the meeting updates, uh, usually each company has a, has a meeting, an, a company meeting. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, I don't know, a small meeting with um, 15 people or with 100 people. Uh, in these meetings, usually the, the team present the top uh, updates, the most important updates of, of that department. And there it's another opportunity that you as a learning and development department can uh, come and promote um, your initiatives, your projects. on. The team meetings uh, can be split also in two areas. One, providing your updates, your usual updates. We've done that, we finished that. But on the other side, the learning and development department also creates, develops usually content trainings, um, actually opportunities for the employees to grow and improve their skills, what we've mentioned previously. And in, in that uh, meeting, We'll also have the opportunity to split the, our updates in two sides. One, providing the usual updates, and on the other side, promote the learning and the learning opportunities, the learning opportunities to improve the skills of, of our colleagues. And uh, in the meeting updates, we can we can do that. For example, uh, uh, the people can go by rotation presenting the updates, and you can choose a person from uh, from the team to promote these initiatives, that the other departments can associate the, 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 the figure of that person with the learning, the sorry, the trainings or the content you are developing in order to go through, okay, I've, taught, I've listened that in the meeting, you've mentioned about that specific training. I'd like to learn more or give me, can you please provide me the link in order to check that specific training? And in that meetings can, um, this can happen. But, uh, I consider that these four ones are the most valuable, at least from my experience. Why? Because they are providing uh, the best opportunity where we can say almost everything. <laughs> we can almost everything and we can promote the most. In the MBR QBRs, we can uh, can have a presentation, a virtual presentation, a live presentation when where we 
um, um, promote ourselves and we, we can say how um, how good we are, how, how the things we've gone through through the last period. The monthly newsletters promote uh, the updates. You can uh, promote the trainings you've created. You can uh, uh, promote best practices, learning resources for, uh, for the entire company, learning resources that can be applicable for uh, for improving their skills related to the learning industry. But on the other side, um, in, in the monthly newsletter, you can promote also other various resources that can help the audience, actually the, 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 the company, the organization, in order to, uh, to achieve um, um, specific knowledge related to some general topics. For example, how to organize virtual meetings, how to engage the learners in the training, in the presentations. Um, there are also other departments that are presenting, they are selling the products and the monthly newsletter can be a better, a, a good way where we can um, um, add all these resources in order to help the our colleagues to make better presentations, to um, I don't know, to get a specific skill on, on something that in general, and the newsletter can be used for that. The company internal events, uh, usually the events are either live events or face-to-face -face events, but this can be an opportunity to involve the entire company. You as an L&D department can come and organize this type of events. You can take it as a start for your department, but this can be extended to the entire company. and bring um, in your event other people from the organization in order to present their um, um, their knowledge or their projects or things that can help the organization and also can help, help them to promote what they are doing. And the team side, because this is an, a direct identity for your uh, department. When people check our LinkedIn profile, when the people check our uh, CV, we have an identity there. This happens the same with the team site in the company. Uh, in my opinion, it's really important to, to not just add folders in a specific SharePoint or in the drive, but we can take this opportunity and create that site throughout the, the other colleagues can, um, can come and uh, see how you are looking, how are the projects are, your projects are organized, what type of activities are you doing and see actually the the visual uh, the visual part and uh, to identify you with something with a color images or projects and that's why i consider that these four uh, initiatives are let's say the most valuable because of their visibility and impact throughout the company also the other ones because here i provided more that can improve this um um can improve the skills for for the for the employees uh, some of them but also on the other side you can have the opportunity to to promote your, your projects but these ones are let's say the, the big ones that i consider and i've i've used also as well um so thank you very much actually um the the purpose of the presentation was to to show you some examples of the of how we can uh, make our colleagues see what we are doing by creating actually in the end the branding for us because all the ideas that I presented it will help the company having a learning culture uh, and also for you as a department have a learning uh, the brand identity throughout the other departments and why not others take from your examples and and uh, and uh, implement it in, in their projects. Now, if you have questions for me, um, and uh, I will ac actually also stop sharing to see <laughs> each other, but in case you have questions, I'm more than open to, to answer them, uh, because this were some of the ideas that I've implemented, I've worked on them, and uh, maybe I can provide a specific example if it's needed. So, just to... Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much, um, Andrea, for this for this presentation. I think it was really insightful, and um, yeah, like with your with your experience coming in, um, really really good to to get a yeah a bigger picture of this as well. Um, I think maybe we just move to the to the open session in general.
and then everyone will have the, the chance to ask their questions um, to you as well. So yeah, let's let's just open this up. I think we have a bit more time than 20 minutes. Um, so that's perfect. Actually, I think everyone has like a couple minutes time um, to yeah introduce themselves and, and ask questions and um, yeah, share maybe their experience on, on things as well. Yeah, uh, I think I see a hand raised, Stephanie. Do you want to hi. do you want to ask? Them? So, yeah, hi. hi. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you too. Um, of course, I'm the one putting my hand up. Always got something to say. Um, um, hi, Andrea. I'm so I think I I put it on the chat, but I'm based in Singapore. I'm um head of learning and development for APAC for a recruitment company. Um. I am pretty much doing all the things that you said on there um, and it's definitely, you know, getting some traction and it's quite, it's quite interesting because especially when like, I'm creating a lot of content internally, which is part of the job that I love, but it's a bit of an unseen aspect. So, you know, you always have that thing of what do people in L&D do other than just train, you know, yeah. especially in months when you know maybe there's not loads of training and some months are really crazy and um, so I think that's really helped especially like the newsletters and stuff like that but what I find is learning and development is a long game so I actually have two different questions um you know I'm doing formal L&D so our, in our business we have a lot of junior managers who you know aren't necessarily the greatest at um people development now yes we've got to upskill them and that kind of lies the different section but in this meantime before they get upskilled what would be your tips on supporting them because they've got to do the kind of the rest of the L&D on on the job um and then my my second question is um I guess yeah it's related to to get people to understand that it is a long game because they're so you know I'm in I'm in recruitment so it's very I'm busy I've got stuff to do now you know so I'm just not going to go to that training session because I've got stuff to do now rather than seeing the value in going and how that can actually help improve the kind of your long term game so I guess a, a couple of different questions there Okay, okay. Relating to the first one, um, what we and how we involved actually the, in my experience, the managers, uh, actually, let's say the junior ones, but also related to the general uh, with, with more experience is, but yes, it's something that should could be dedicated um, to, to the learning and development department to focus on a specific person that uh, can be responsible for doing that. For example, what we've done is sending, like, for example, when somebody came into the company, it doesn't matter if it's a manager or a person related to the specific department, we it was our responsibility as the learning and development department to send a nice, but when I'm saying nice, it's visual, but also with some, um, not tips and tricks, but or steps that needs to be done in order to be prepared for the role. And this will make them involved in the team, know how to help their team members afterwards after they finish for example in that meeting we've sent after the hr department send the or the new hire announcement for example that a specific person came in, in in the company after that the learning and development department came with an onboarding email where we encourage the person um even if it's as i told you the the manager or as um or individual contributor to uh make that specific te steps including the onboarding part and also some next steps and useful links that can use to make them involved from the beginning and have a specific and a, an ongoing process until a specific time. After that, after that email comes, it's related or at, at least from my experience and what I've tried to, to encourage that after that email, after the preparation and after the learning and development department is involved there, it comes the responsibility also for that specific department where the person came to onboard the person and to provide them uh, the, the shadowing part and also support role transition. Actually, we have, in my experience, I have three, three parts, the onboarding, the shadowing and the role transition. This after the onboarding, where the learning and development department starts with that message, where we provide all the steps 
the shadowing and the onboarding, actually, the specific onboarding came in that department, the shadowing and after that, the role transition where the person, it, uh, it, will, uh, it, will, um, it will perform. This should be a constant communication with the learning and development department with that specific department. I think it's mandatory to happen. Otherwise, you cannot track this happening. <laughs> Um, and uh, related to, to the other question, can you please uh, repeat it to make sure that I understood it co correctly? Yeah, so, you know, because it, it's interesting to hear from different industries. I think learning and development and recruitment companies is quite uh -huh. different. It's super hands on. You know, I know I can train in a month what an LD professional might train in a year. Okay. Um, we, we do it all in house pretty much. Yes, there's lots of external, but you've got you know quite a few people with good experience and we you know know recruitment very well etc so we do it all in-house but what I find is and this is very much from a mindset perspective um because the amount of L&D we're doing at the, now is a lot more than we have done previously in APAC so you know there'll be training sessions going on that these people their managers have told me they need to develop in these areas etc but learning and development is a long game so, you know, yes, you can come in and learn things instantly and go and implement them, but often it's really to go and reflect on your current practices, you know, work hard at implementing, reflect again, improve, reflect, improve. Um, so we often get people that are so kind of focused on their recruitment okay. job that things are happening. You know, jobs are coming in, interviews needed sorting, clients are calling, they go, oh, I'm too busy. So I'm just, I'm actually going to focus and I'm not going to come to the training. Yeah, uh, so training. I think it's one of the biggest challenges that we have as a learning and development department, in my opinion and from my experience, because what I've done in this part is to promote the trainings in that meeting updates that I've told you, actually the company meeting, to make sure that the people are looking to the training. And what I've discovered from my experience is that if you are providing the link of the training in a live event, you have better chances to open the link and maybe, yes, and here, here that's why I'm saying maybe finish the training. But for sure, from my experience, the, so if you are providing the link of the training or if you are promoting the training in a newsletter, is a less chance to check the training than if you promoted it in a in a live event, for example, uh, a meeting, a company meeting. But it's a big challenge, and uh, what I've done, I, I will I will provide an example from my experience and the collaboration and to talk with the managers from different departments to dedicate their people set up in their calendar at least one hour per per week or per month dedicated to learning. So the uh, the manager set up for their um, uh, for their teams actually that hour, even if it's per week, even if it's per month, to be dedicated to learn something. Combining this with the promotion of the LD, because if the culture of the LD department is done, is not done in the company, it's actually they go, they match together because our responsibility is to promote them, but on the other side, to communicate with the other departments to dedicate that time for learning, actually to set up in the calendar. Um, and another thing, it's this part that I, I've noticed in the in the meetings that you have also, actually it's a guarantee that they will open the, the course for sure, if it's in a live event then, uh, but, the follow-up, I think, is this collaboration with, with the other managers to step at that time. Yeah. But I, I yeah. can, yes, it comes also with the engaged training, make, uh, in, actually add engagement in your training, not just content that the people will follow. Uh, create a, need, a, a training needs analysis that you're training to be applicable for your team members, for your the organization. But uh, yes, it's, it's LND department responsibility to, to do it before, actually, to, to make sure that training is for your people in the company and not just training to be there. Um, yeah, yeah, our training, but, I mean, you know, our training is very, so it's all, um, it's either virtual training or if it's in Singapore face to face. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. a session with workshops, paired, paired group, group exercises, role play. So it's very, mm -hmm. very active. 
and engaging. It's not mm-hmm. just a webinar, just on we have online learning as well, but mm-hmm. it certainly doesn't have the engagement le- but- levels. I really think it's that lead, it's that relationships with the managers, I feel, and getting them to understand the value and for the them value. to kind of, you know, drill down to, and they're mm-hmm. signing their people up. They're and saying, this up. is training. <laughs> so I'm yeah. signing them. You know, it's all relevant, it's all real, but it's mm-hmm. amazing how. Or I've talked to my manager and they said it's fine for me to miss, you know. And I feel, <laughs> I mean, hopefully, I mean, we all know the economic climate is not doing very well. You can imagine in recruitment, recruitment business has been hit very mm-hmm. heavily. Um, but I'm hoping the market picks up next year and I'm actually mm-hmm. able to fly out, you know, to meet the teams across APAC because I haven't, you know, I've met some of the senior, senior leaders, but not like the managers. And, you know, I think to be able to build relationships up with them, I think is really mm-hmm. important. So is that not fine? I think it's really important to set up, set up this time because um, I think on, on the other side, for example, the manager can encourage their people to go through the training. But if that time, that specific time is not set it up, meaning to know, to get a reminder that this week we'll have one hour dedicated to learn something new and maybe pr- pr- have received in the same time a specific mail for that training or check the monthly newsletter in order for that month to see the training because the learning and development department can promote the trainings in the newsletter and on the other side the manager can set up time for their team in order to dedicate to to, to check the training or specific trainings related to their interest yeah yeah Maybe uh, Stephanie to share some um, experience that I had when I was in Singapore for Siemens. Um, yeah. Two things that we did there was, um, and Andra, that's a little bit what you mentioned earlier, the QBRs and the, the monthly business reviews, but we were not presenting the numbers. We were giving the responsibility of presenting the learning progress back to the managers and to the departments. And they need to now tell the management why their people are not trained and why certain things are not achieved. So that really helped us to to get a little bit more responsibility from the um, management team and from the leadership um, on that. And another thing that we did is we had certain meetings normally when like the um, uh, business areas were having their annual meetings. They were presenting product updates and, and new features and stuff like this. At the end of those meetings, it was an all-day meeting or two-day event or three-day event sometimes, there was the learning department that did little quizzes to see if this knowledge was really um, uh, taken up. So we were involved. You couldn't leave the meeting without doing this uh, uh, quiz and this learning uh, event. So um, try to maybe combine it with some you know, live events or where you anyhow have the people where they cannot go away. And it's a little bit like what Andra also mentioned. If you just send an email, it might easily be ignored. But if the people are there and they're leaving the room before the quiz is done, you know, everybody sees that and uh, gives, gives a little bit more pressure. Yeah, but maybe also opening up uh, to the others um, yeah, because I believe there's probably a lot of um, great examples and ideas in the room. So the idea of this um, last 15 minutes, really, um, please also share who you are, what you're doing, any questions that you have to Andra, any other great ideas of how you do the promotion um, of l and in your organization. And um, should we maybe just go by the order, uh, alphabetic order, uh, might be the, the easiest, I guess. Um, so on my list, I have Alexandra, um, as the first one here. Yes, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, um, my name is Alexandra. I'm uh, currently an instructional design uh, uh, intern at an aviation company in Romania. And um, thanks Andra for the presentation. It was uh, very useful. I don't... Uh, necessarily have to share any experience yet I'm just gladly listening to everything and um, yes um, trying to learn as much as I can thank you thank you you. and then um, following the alphabet um, Andre hello um I'm sorry, I'm going to keep my camera off because my room is kind of a mess and I don't think even the blur can fix that. 
So I'm just going to stay like this. Um, yeah, great presentation. Uh, really enjoyed it. And um, I really enjoy your newsletters as well and everything you do in that space. Um, I feel there's a need for that kind of voice, especially kind of on LinkedIn and, and publicly. Um, I come from a more um, artsy background. My background's in film and animation. And I sort of transitioned into the L&D space, uh, making a lot of videos, uh, making a lot of video content, making a lot of animation content. Um, and that's sort of where I've kind of transitioned from role to role, kind of learning more about the theory, uh, and joining kind of meetings like this, um, where I'm kind of trying to still learning some of the background and, and some of the theory behind, um, instructional design and learning in general. But, um, I would say I'm mostly a content creator at first and, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, uh, a, a little bit about me. I don't have Thank any questions. I thought. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Um, then next one in the list would be Elena. Yes, hi. Um, so nice to, to see this presentation, Andra. Uh, I actually used to work with Andra in Microsoft, so um, it's a great pleasure to, to see her uh, like this. Um, I'm currently based in Berlin, but relocating to Romania soon. Um, and I'll actually be working with Andra closer. Um, what can I say? I am a learning experience designer. I worked in Germany for Wayfair and on running. Um, what I did, I focused mostly on developing learning programs, uh, onboarding programs for our customer service teams. I worked with stakeholders from all around the globe, which was such a huge learning. You know, Andra, you are talking about meeting with other departments and learning from them. I feel like one of the uh, things that I learned the most as an um, LXD was this, how to communicate with other cultures. And it wasn't an easy learning. So yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I also learned a lot from engineering and, you know, people developing the products and so on. So I do see great value in, in doing this on a regular basis. And when it comes to how do you market and how do you navigate all the challenges? Because of course, people don't have time, especially customer service teams. They also have to you know, accomplish KPIs and they also have to you know, handle the customers uh, in an appropriate manner. Um, yeah, I can definitely say what Andra mentioned about having town halls, having meetings, being on the floor, meeting with people, connecting with them, letting them know you are there, assessing things on the spot, you know, identifying not just knowledge gaps, but knowledge needs, depending on teams, on departments, on, you know, even channels they handle, uh, it's it's crucial. So yeah, thank you for this event and um, really nice to, to be here today. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. Um, Madeleine, do you want to share some of your thoughts with us? Yes, sure. At first, and uh, thank you so much for a great presentation. I enjoyed this very much. <laughs> thank you. I'm uh, coming also from the HR um, area and was working for the last seven and a half years for a maritime company. And uh, at the moment, I'm on a sabbatical and use my time for myself to come down a little bit and relax, but also, um, yeah, to improve my skills a lot. Um, in the last uh, months, I visited the online marketing course and also uh, social media to use it in a better way uh, for my uh, new jobs in the future and also um, then I uh, had a quiet conversation with Christian <laughs> about uh, um, different things so and now um, I decided to improve my English skills a lot for the next uh, months and will visit a um, new English course uh, starting on um, Thursday and yeah, let's see what will happen in the next time, because um, at the moment I'm looking for a new way for myself. And um, at the moment I have to try to find out if I would like to work um, in international companies in the next time or maybe beginning in the next year and uh, work in this area where I come from or 
I uh, would like to work more in my uh, second part as a systemic coach. But at the moment, I'm not really clear in my mind. So I have to find it out in the next um, weeks. Yeah, so to say, I have a lot to do <laughs> with myself. But, um, I know a lot of things what you were describing, Enra, because of my um, another role in the uh, company and uh, we were also working with the employees with the recruitment i was also re uh, responsible for the recruitment and also had a lot of uh, part of the uh, development so um it was yeah quite fantastic for me to work but um, if i'm honest i have to learn a lot of all these things and it was for me um yeah very nice uh, that you shared so many uh, thoughts of your experience uh, so that I can think about it and yeah let's see how um, to use it also in, in my future time and okay. in my coming goals good what luck <laughs> <laughs> in choosing the best path and thank you for being today <laughs> yeah thank you too <laughs> yeah um, and then Stefan is also uh, on the list Stefan. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm uh, another of Andra's fans, and it's good to be here. And I uh, have a background as a trainer, and some years ago I transitioned towards um, content development, instructional design, and other adjacent uh, efforts. Uh, right now I'm uh, doing a stint in uh, publishing and content operations and just improving um, processes for uh, one of the backbone teams um, which deals with content published for uh, for Microsoft uh, especially in LMS area and uh, I can uh, confirm that one of the um, concepts or the the ideas that under presented the internal events are uh, very very important because I was invited as a guest speaker, so I can tell you something from the other side of the barricade. Uh, that invitation helped <clears throat> myself and my team so much because um, within our bubble, everything makes sense. I mean, we're technical, we know how to do a lot of stuff that we're involved in, uh, but the moment we have to share this with some other people, and um, especially if they don't have experience with what, what we know, and that's a bit of a challenge. So uh, the biggest help that we got from from Andres invite was to uh, make sure that everything that we do uh, can be presented in a very uh, simple and easy to understand manner. And that helped us later on with some new stakeholders we, which we got and uh, was kind of like a dress rehearsal for uh, for future efforts. So um and I, I was also glad to, to help Andra's team understand more about uh, the, the kind of work that we do. And generally, it was a really fun moment and a very good uh, moment for improving the, the company culture and, the uh, let's say, the office experience as we had. Yeah. So thank yeah. you, Andra. No worries. Thank you also <laughs> for that. Yeah. Actually, here, um, yeah, I can add the fact that Sometimes and yes, we we I had this kind of experience with Stefan when uh, coming in in my team and presenting some. Um, actually, it was a training at that time, but we also see saw the value of having this kind of uh, promotion of our of what we do and presenting the information in a let's say face to face environment, it, and it, it can help a lot than the virtual or maybe the online. So it can be also another way that we can, because, and also Elena mentioned previously that we can meet with the people on the floor, ask them what they would like, meaning you can ask them directly or talk with them and see their needs and what they need. Yes, uh, uh, in the virtual perspective, we create uh, organized and uh, structured ways of presenting this, of promoting, these opportunities in order to um, to see how um, uh, how the people or how they want to learn, but face to face it can be, let's say, one of the most applicable and uh, enjoyable and 
let's say the I can say one of the best perspectives on on promoting and and see each other, but it's not possible every time. So we we have to adapt <laughs> at some point. Yep. Andra, do you have any experience, or maybe anybody else in the room as well, for that uh, matter, with incentive or or bonus programs that are related to learning? So I know that some of our clients that uh, use our learning tools they actually do have at the end of the year there's bonuses if they achieved certain learning levels certain badges certain certain qualifications um what are you um, talking about? related to learning not really but meaning it, it can be applied also for the learning because it's the uh it, it can be applied for for the team as well but also for the other teams so it's across the organization um uh, i've seen an example uh, of a peer bonus points at the end of the quarter or the end of the year, where based on your involvement in different projects, in different initiatives, helping the other team members with um, your uh, mentorship or your um, uh, dedicated time in helping them and see and promoting actually yourself very well, um, you can um, fulfill in a specific form that it's created usually by the HR department, and you can provide these bonus points to the people that help you at some point in the organization. And at the end, these points can transform and can be um, uh, in, I don't know, present money or financial perspective, different ways of how the other company, uh, each company decides, but uh, mostly based on involvement and performance. And on the other side, it can be also a um, yearly bonus, but also based on your performance evaluation. Not actually related to the learning, but yes, the learning was involved there. In what type, because in the evaluation, everyone can include what, uh, how, what was your involvement or um, in, um, in the, based on the trainings that you focused on or you finished, throughout the year to develop that specific skill. And based on that, your evalu performance evaluation will increase and the automatically the, the bonus or the benefit will be more than that. But you can see also, actually the manager can see the value in, uh, in, your, uh, in your trainings through your experience throughout the year. So this can be two right. examples. Yearly target uh, discussion, individual targets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds Nope. Any other questions? I still have a lot, but I think they don't fit into the next one or two minutes. So I will have the <laughs> last one separately. Mm -hmm. I think if there is no further questions, um, or maybe there is, then feel free to connect um, on LinkedIn, um, go into individual calls, share experiences. Um, that's what this calls uh, should trigger, um, that you increase your network and, and get to know new colleagues. And um, from our side, an extreme big thank you, Andra, to you for sharing all this experience and knowledge. It's, it's often forgotten at this moment when we talk about so much AI and digitalization and digital transformation that those other aspects are so super important, just especially the buy-in of the management and, and the team. It's, uh, I think, absolutely underestimated. Uh, big thank you from our side, also to the rest of the participants. And we will, uh, or we hope that we will see you soon um, again, next month, next round, um, with a different topic and stay in contact. Yep. Yeah, thanks thank uh, you, for yeah. my side as well, Andra. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Bye, so much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.